For thousands of years, man has believed that he was the beginning and end of creation. But this certainty began to be shaken a little over a century ago, when Darwin exposed man as a product of the evolution of the species. In the 21st century, science has broadened man's horizons and places him within the evolution of the universe. Man now appears as part of the cosmos, as a diminutive being who, thanks to an incredible miracle of chance, is able to look into the infinite in order to write the history of the universe. This image of a television before picking up a station is an echo of the Big Bang. Some of these points on the screen are produced by the radiation that the great creative explosion generated. They are photons that are still reaching Earth from the period when the universe was in the first phases of its expansion. Other particles from the infancy of the cosmos also reach our planet and are much more difficult to perceive. They are the neutrinos that go through our bodies constantly. They are one of the components of dark matter, a force that has taken the lead in a new anatomy of the universe that man is beginning to dissect. Most scientists believe that the physical world emerged around 14 billion years ago from a microscopic point in which an almost infinite amount of energy was concentrated. Its density was so great that it ended up exploding as if it were a great nuclear oven. The energy liberated in the explosion then began to expand in all directions, creating a new reality. We do not know what existed before, but after the Big Bang, our space appeared and time began. And with space and time, everything that they contain, galaxies, planets, stars, even human beings. I think uh, there was a long time when people thought, well, we could think of other theories, you know, besides the Big Bang Theory to explain where the universe came from. And, you know, we had Fred Hoyle and his colleagues trying to come up with a steady state theory. The idea of the universe is expanding, but as space expands, a new matter appears, and you can get that new matter coalesces to form new stars and so forth. And in that universe, it's very psychologically appealing. It's a universe where, you know, the universe always was and always will be, and it's always being refreshed. And, but the Big Bang is very different. It's this moment of creation, or this big element of creation, that suddenly, poof, you create a huge amount of, time, uh, uh, of space and time, and the universe starts evolving furiously and 
spectacularly and you get more space and more time and all these you know particles and things in the universe and they're all sort of looks like they're going through chaotic motion and everything and as the dust settles, they sort of gather together and you first end up making protons and neutrons and electrons out of it and then you form the atoms and then the atoms form the various things you get this you know this evolution going on but it tells you there was a beginning and there will probably be an end and it may be a you know it may be a catastrophic end where things crunch together or it may be a sort of a whimper end where it just everything gets diluted down to where it's just garbage everywhere To reach this contemporary view of the creation of the universe, with its beginning and end, many beliefs and forms of thought have undergone complete revolutions. Classical culture believed that the universe was stable, that it did not change. Newton was also convinced of this, and even Einstein too, before we discovered that galaxies travel, moving away from the center of the big explosion. Thanks to this new paradigm, our cosmic destiny depends on such concepts as radiation, space-time, or the void. It does not provide answers as to why we are here, but it is upheld by a scientific certainty, the model of the Big Bang. The model of the Big Bang, or the theory of origin, began to be hatched in the 1920s when the U.S. astronomer Edwin Hubble studied the galaxies. From his telescope on Mount Wilson, he perceived that they moved away from each other as if the entire universe were expanding. The movement also indicated that the matter had been closer before. And if one turned back the hand of time into the past, one could reach a moment when it was all compressed or compact. These observations on the galaxies led the Russian-American astrophysicist George Gamow to formulate the first statement of the Big Bang Theory, or the Great Explosion, that created the universe as we know it. To demonstrate the validity of such a surprising theory, scientists first had to find the traces of the explosion. And given the magnitude the cataclysm must have had, Gamow deduced that one would have to be able to detect the radiation unleashed in the blast throughout the entire universe. Because due to the law of conservation of energy, the radiation would not have disappeared. In the early 1960s, the astrophysicist Jim Pebbles of the Institute for Advanced Studies in Princeton started to look for this radiation. But two other physicists, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, found it when trying to eliminate a bothersome noise captured by antenna. It was background radiation, the first proof validating the Big Bang Theory. Shortly thereafter, the theory received new backing with the verification that the universe was mainly made up of two basic elements, hydrogen and helium, and in the exact proportion predicted in the theory. Both discoveries provide physics with its creation myth, since now everything indicated that there was a common origin for all matter. After establishing how the universe must have originated, cosmologists had, and still have before them, an even greater challenge to write its history to know what happened from that instant on. <laughs> 